What's up guys, it's Phil, and today I'm gonna show you five different ways to cut a mortise in a table leg. Now if you've done any farmhouse style tables or if you uh, have looked online as far as like the internet plans and, and whatnot that are available, uh, whether it's from people like me or mommy bloggers or internet builders, whoever's got these farmhouse table plans, a lot of what you see is where one piece of wood needs to fit into another piece of wood. Now one way to do that is to simply attach a shorter piece of wood, say a 2x4, to a longer piece of wood, say another 2x4, attach them together, leaving 3.5 inches on top, and you can put another 2x4 there. That's one way to kind of make a rabbit lap joint, um, which is okay, uh, but when you need to cut it out of the center of the leg, how are you going to do that? Especially if all you have is basic tools. Here's how. Now starting with the hardest and most involved, or in my opinion the easiest and the best way to do it, uh, is slightly more expensive because you have to already have a table saw. Now if you have a table saw already, you can go and get a dado stack and they average anywhere from like 50 bucks on the cheap side to $80. Now in order to use the dado stack, I have actually built a sled for my table saw and this allows me to keep all the pieces completely square and add a stop block if I need to and then I can run these pieces through the dado stack on my sled and determine where they're going to cut on the length of the piece and also how deep it's going to cut into the piece by adjusting the table saw. The dado stack is a pretty good way to do it and this is most people's preferred method. It does get the cleanest cuts and the tightest joints because it's extremely adjustable and it's very, very fast and leaves very little room for mistakes. The second way to do this is just by using your table saw. Now, if your table saw came with a crosscut uh, sled or if you've made a crosscut sled for yourself, you can do this pretty easily. Um, all you have to do is determine where you want your two cuts to be, the top and the bottom, and how deep you want them to go into the piece and set your blade at that height. Then all you have to do is simply push the piece through, cut your topmost part, cut your bottommost part, and if you're using a sled, you can just set it where you want it. If you're using a stop block or if you're using a the fence for the table saw, um, make sure that that's adjusted to where you want it to be and start cutting your piece. Now, once you've got the top and bottom cut, you have two options. You can either hog this thing out an eighth of an inch at a time, which is not so bad. It takes about 16 to 24 passes for a, for a three inch cut, but uh, that can be time consuming and a little bit dangerous, but it's worth doing. Um, it does give you a nice clean flat top if you take your time and you're patient and you do it right. I did it this way for years before I bought my dado and I enjoyed doing it this way. This works really, really well. You can also combine this with one of our methods that I'm going to show you later, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Now if you don't have a table saw, but you do have one of these sliding miter saws, the next method is actually pretty cool. All you have to do is set your miter saw so that it only comes down to a certain depth. So you want to set your depth of the cut on the saw itself. You want to pull the saw out bring it down as far as it will let you, and then slowly push it back through the piece. Then, bring the saw up, repeat that for the bottommost cut, and then just like the table saw, you can either hog it out an eighth of an inch at a time by continually repeating this process and moving the piece just a little bit at a time, or you can combine it with another method we're gonna do here in just a moment. So with a circular saw, it's a little more challenging, but it can be done because a lot of people have these and can afford these a lot more easily than you can a regular compound miter saw. So on my circular saw, I don't have to make a lot of an adjustment, but I do want to adjust it so that the teeth are just hitting at an inch and a half deep. So now you can go over to your leg piece and securing it to your workbench or, or some table or whatever, you want to turn on the circular saw and very carefully run it in a perfectly straight line just along that black line that you just made on the bottom and then again on the top. Now, here's where it gets dangerous and I don't recommend this. You can go through and just like the other saws, you can hog it out an eighth of an inch at a time, but that starts to get a little dangerous and very messy when you're holding the circular saw 
by hand. So what I recommend is that we actually go through and now that we've made those first two cuts, you want to go ahead and make another two cuts anywhere in between the two. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be specific, but you want to cut them down to the same depth. Now we're going to grab a hammer by itself if you're lucky, or if you really want to get precise, a hammer and a chisel or even a screwdriver. And you want to very lightly tap the edge of the wood inside of the cuts that you just made. And by tapping it on the edge, you're gonna to start to break apart those uh, wood grains that are in there. Now, if you do use a chisel or a screwdriver, you can make an initial cut first and then really tap it. Then the fun part comes along, put it on the edge of your workbench and just smack the tar out of it. That's gonna knock these pieces out. It's gonna break the wood along the grain and then go back with your chisel or a saw or something if you need to and kind of clean it up a little bit. But that is a very quick and easy, effective way to do it using tools that everybody should already have anyway, even if you don't have the more expensive tools. The last way is the most time consuming, um, but possibly the most satisfying if you're a real hands-on woodworker, and that's to very simply use hand tools. So just like with the circular saw, um, you're gonna wanna take your regular hand saw, pick whichever one you want, um, but just a, a good fast cutting hand saw. You're going to want to cut the bottom of the mortise first, go up and cut the top of the mortise, make sure that you've got the exact width you need, and then from there, cut another three, four, five, you know, cuts, uh, and then go through with your hammer and chisel once again, and you want to knock out these pieces and then chisel them out and make them a little bit flat. Um, again, I would recommend a wood chisel, but if you don't have a set or you don't want to spend the money on them, um, it can be done with a screwdriver, or if you're lucky, you just knock them out and it'll knock out more than enough wood, and when you go back and glue the next piece in place, you can hide that and it's not really going to matter. So just in case you're wondering, yes, this is the technique I was talking about with the first couple. If you make your first couple of cuts and you don't want to just hog out all that wood and take all that time and make all that dust to do it, you can use the method I just showed you with the circular saw, but you can do it on the table saw or your chop saw, however you want to do it. Cut three to four lines and then use a hammer and a chisel or a screwdriver or just beat it with a hammer and break it along the grain it'll all come out and when it meets up in the end, it's gonna be hidden anyway. So that technique, the hammer and chisel, can be used to cut out the wood if you don't wanna hog it all out with the saws. Now you can also do this with a router, but I really don't recommend that. Um, that's, that's a high horsepower router, big expensive bits, it can jump around on you. It's not something for beginner woodworkers and honestly, the ways I just showed you are all a lot safer and a lot easier, uh, especially for someone just working out of their garage doing their first project or just building something that your wife asks you to build and you have no experience at all. So that's it guys, I hope you like this quick tip. I really hope it helps some of you guys out there. I have used every single one of these methods over time. I started with the hand cut method and went to the circular saw, knocking it out with a hammer. Then I started using the chop saw, um, which I did like, but then I got my nice table saw. And once I got that and I learned how to use it properly, I've really enjoyed doing that course made the step up to the data, which just made such a difference, but I know that that's a couple hundred dollars worth of tools that not everybody's going to have. Because um, mine's not the biggest top of the line thing, but it is a pretty expensive saw um, and a pretty expensive dado stack. So that's usually a lot more than the hobbyists are going to want to spend or even need to. To be honest, if you have a hand saw, a hammer, and a chisel, and you're making one dining table, just do it. It's worth taking the time, having the fun, and not spending the money uh, for those kind of tools. So thanks for watching, guys. Comment below if there's anything else that you want to see, any other tips or tricks that you might need, um, and let me know how this helped. Please feel free to email me, show me some of the photos of the projects you've done using one of these methods. And if you know a better method or another method that even I could use, hey, comment below, send it to me. I would love to hear it. I would love to see it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. I'm sure you already did. Turn on those notifications so that you get new videos just like this whenever I post them. And make sure to share with as many of your friends and family as you can so that I don't have to. Anyway, guys, thanks for checking this out. Keep on building. We'll see you next time. Also, a quick disclaimer while the credits are going and the thank you for watching and the other playlists are coming up, I do want to tell you guys that it is ill-advised to ever use solid 4x4s for your table legs. It's gonna crack, it's gonna split, it's terrible. You do not want to use solid 
four by four blocks if you don't want giant cracks developing in the next three, four years as it dries. Really what I do is take two two by fours and laminate them together and then cut my stock from there. And that way if they ever cup or warp, they're gonna be cupping towards each other. It gives a little more strength, a little more sturdiness, uh, and it's, it's much less prone to checking and cracking than a solid four by four is. So take that, put it in your pocket, that one's free.